Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome once again to Horror Babble. Today we've got a brand new MD Vickers story for you. We're from the same neck of the woods, so I figured that this new story, Horror Pond, would be more suited to my native accent. For more info on Mr. Vickers, see the video description below. And without further ado, Horror Pond by M. D. Vickers. The three boys who were involved in this true nightmarish account were twelve year old Simon Briars, eleven year old Jonathan Snape, and Matthew Bartholomew, who was also twelve. I must warn you now, dear reader, that if your stomach gets queasy very easily, then I would advise you to avoid reading it. The rest of you, plough on. The date in question was the 11th of August, 1979. The three boys whom I told you about in the brief prologue were, on that hot summer day in 79, on a nature ramble organised by themselves. It wasn't a serious ramble, more of an aimless wander through rampant shrubbery. It was the last day of the summer holidays. They were about to start high school the following day. All three felt cramping anticipation at the thought, in greater or lesser degrees. The idea of the ramble was to attempt to take their minds off it. "'My stomach keeps rolling thinking of tomorrow,' Briars remarked as the sun continued to cocoon them in a suffocating blanket. "'I know what you mean,' Snape responded. Jonathan Snape was a timid character with a bull cut. He had a high metabolism, judging by his emaciated frame. Bartholomew suddenly said, "'You two are pansies. It's only school. Face it like a man.' He was a brash character, confident and aggressive. Jonathan Snape and Simon Briars both felt their stomachs roll even more at Bartholomew's sudden outburst. "'You're saying that, but really you're shaking,' Briars responded. Briars was an intelligent lad, nervous and timid like Snape. "'Bullshit!' Bartholomew vented, and suddenly bent down and rummaged around in the trampled bracken beneath his feet. Straightening his stance again, he held what he had found in his outstretched hand. It was a toad, but not a common toad. This one had a yellow stripe running down its back, the sign of a natterjack. Briars had done his own work. "'Hey, that's a natterjack, that is. The rare they are.' "'It'll be even rarer now,' Bartholomew spat and dropped the toad on the ground in front of him. "'By toady!' His size six Dunlop trainer rose off the floor and stomped on the hapless amphibian before him. Bartholomew removed his foot. The natterjack was lying there, squashed flat. It had burst in two places, emitting a string of turds and a slimy tube of its guts. You lousy bastard! Briars suddenly leapt at the smug Bartholomew and feebly punched his chin. The pair of them collapsed back and disappeared into the undergrowth. Snape could hear the heavy scuffle and muttered oaths. He ran towards them and delivered a kick to Matthew Bartholomew's thigh. You tight get, he shouted. Thirty seconds later they both stood, looking dishevelled and sweaty, briars with a bloody nose in addition. This is what I think of your beloved toad, Bartholomew erupted, and ran over to where the toad frisbee lay on the dry grass. He bent, grabbed it, tossed it a foot into the air and booted it. It spiralled and somersaulted grotesquely against the clear blue sky, before landing with a brief rustle about twenty yards away. "'You make me sick,' Briars remarked, and stormed off with Jonathan Snape close behind. "'Purr and my poofs. Bartholomew stood watching their retreating figures with a grin on his grimy face. Half an hour later, Briars and Snape came to a pond. Not a very big one. There seemed to be large blobs of coloured liquid on the surface. A few dead fish floated lifelessly. Wood, newspapers and drinks cans clumped together at the edge. A bed rail protruded from the murky slime. "'God, it looks filthy,' Snape remarked to Briars. "'There doesn't seem to be any life at all in it,' Simon Briars returned. Then— Crashing through the undergrowth behind them, Bartholomew emerged. 
There you are. Hey, look at this, a swimming pool. Bartholomew began to remove his T-shirt and jeans. You're not serious, Bryce demanded to the steadfast face of Matthew Bartholomew. Deadly, Bartholomew grunted as he removed a stubborn sock. Then, down to his Dennis the Menace underpants, he dived into the twenty-foot stretch of filth head first. His body sliced through the strange gelatinous blobs, and he vanished temporarily. That lad's a total knobhead. Both Snape and Briars were stirring disbelievingly, first at Bartholomew's untidy bundle of clothes, then at the spot where he'd submerged in the pond. The surface was broken as Bartholomew erupted, his head coated in the multicoloured lumps of slime and rotting algae. It's great, he bellowed and disappeared again. On surface in a second time, Briar shouted to him, It's polluted, you idiot. Swallow any of that water and you've had it. Get out, for Christ's sake. Bollocks to you. Get in, it's nice and cold. Stinks a bit, though, granted. Bryce turned his head to the unbelieving Snape next to him. Come on, let's just leave this silly prick alone. He needs help badly. They both turned and headed for home, back through the trampled bracken, as Bartholomew's splashing and laughter carried with them. The following day, Simon Briars called round for Jonathan Snape, and in turn, they both went and called for Matthew Bartholomew. Both of them were sick and shaky with nerves. They were very quiet, as their stomachs rolled with anticipation. Bartholomew emerged from his front door looking subdued. His blazer looked too big, and the two boys noticed the rash that had broken out on his face and hands. "'What's that rash, Matt?' Briars remarked, and Bartholomew automatically put a blotchy hand up to his equally as blotchy face. "'Just a nervous rash,' he said, and the three boys began their walk up to their new school, all of them lost in their own thoughts. As Jonathan Snape and Matthew Bartholomew began to write out their timetable, Simon Briars was doing likewise, but in a different room. He was in a different form, much to his disappointment. As Snape was halfway through filling in Monday's rigmarole, Bartholomew emitted a gasp next to him. Jonathan Snape turned and felt a cold thrust rip into his stomach. In front of Bartholomew, on his desk, totally covering his incomplete timetable, was a mound of brown hair. As Snape continued to stir, more hair began to fall out of Matthew Bartholomew's bubbling scalp. Jonathan Snape screamed, and stood from his chair. The whole class looked up, and also screamed. Matthew Bartholomew began to stand up, his eyeballs rolling wildly. A trembling, bubbling hand panickingly clawed the horrifying mound off his desk. He started to scream himself, and as he did, something long fell from his oversized blazer, something long and red and rotting, with five twitching digits on the end of it. People began to rise from chairs. The classroom was filled with shrieks and screams. Jonathan Snape felt his diaphragm contract, and he fired a single jet of curdled stomach acid over Bartholomew's arm, which had separated itself from his body. The teacher, Mr. Barton, stood immobilized as he stood transfixed at the scene unraveling in front of him. Dear God, dear the Almighty God, then he finally found the willpower to move. Matthew Bartholomew lurched towards him, his whole head was undulating. Jonathan Snape, vomiting crusted around his mouth, stood and watched with a feeling of incredible, unbelieving terror as the rest of the class began to storm towards the door. As Snape watched, he saw Mr. Barton raise a hand to the shambling entity which was approaching him, saw the hand reach up in a reflex to Matthew Bartholomew's ravaged, hurless head. Just before Jonathan Snape collapsed, he saw, and heard, even over the frantic screams of his classmates, Matthew Bartholomew's head under the slight brush from Mr. Barton's hand, break free of his neck, and hit the desk with an audible bonk. Then, complete darkness washed over him, and he sagged to the floor, as the classroom descended into chaos all around him.
Thank you for listening today. If you enjoyed this reading and would like to support our work here at Horror Babble, please feel free to pay us a visit over at Patreon. Links to Patreon and the Bandcamp shop can be found in the video description below. Until next time, goodbye.